Some might say they don't make rock and roll stars like my next guest anymore. As part of Oasis, he conquered the charts, and while fans hoped that band would live forever, it was not to be. But he didn't slide away. He's flying high now, of course, with a new album and an Irish date in the diary. And he wants to talk tonight. Would you welcome, please, Noel Gallagher, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Much. Good to see. You. I, I, I'm kind of you're one of the the few kind of Anglo-Irish guests who I'm tempted to say welcome home and mean it. Oh, thank you. It's the real deal. Thank you very much. Thank How's you. your mum? Insane. Yes. <laughs> yeah, she's insane. Every time I see Peggy on an interview or in part of any documentary, or whatever, she's more Irish than you can than imagine. anyone else. Than yeah. anyone else. She's just had uh, both her cataracts done. Okay. And. She, I was up in Manchester the other day visiting her, and she was, and I got, she always got the front door open, in yeah. Manchester, on a council estate. <laughs> That's how mad she is, right? So I walk in, she's not there. She's out in the garden doing something, and I'm, I saw the, the big deal is she's got her eyesight back, and I'm like, how are you doing? She's like, geez, I'm walking around this house, and I'm forever taking my glasses off, and I don't wear them anymore, and. Uh, She's like every Irish woman, she could find complaint in it. You know, she was, she was saying, well, <laughs> now I've had my eyes done, yeah. I can see how dirty the house is. <laughs> she said, I must have been sloshing around in the kitchen for years. <laughs> and, uh, but she's, uh, she's good. She's OK. She's good, she's got, uh, yeah, she's good. She's, uh, Big she's... birthday? There was one recently, yeah. 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 How is she with that? They never celebrate. They never celebrate them after a while. Yeah. Do they? It's kind of. They don't. My mum doesn't even want it acknowledged. Yeah. Which uh, is handy for three sons, two of them who are rock stars. Yeah. Were kind of like what? Yeah. But, <laughs> but um, no, she's good. She's on good form. She's good form. Yeah. I remember you. You're talking about one. One more question about your mum because mm. she just fascinates me when because when when you were you were describing how a, a phone call from Peggy. Well, they always get these. You always get these phone calls where she'll say, where you pick up the phone and she'll say, now, listen, let me tell you. She'll say, do you remember David from next door? Yeah. No. She, you do. He was married to Janine. <laughs> no, I don't, no, no. She, didn't she work in the spa? <laughs> no, did she have a feckin' dog called Bimbo? <laughs> no, the, the, they left him at the football match. And he found his way home, and in the end, there's so many questions, you have to say, David, yes! <laughs> and she went, didn't he die? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, OK. I, I think a lot of us have had phone calls like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they do love... I, uh, they do love a good death. Yeah. You know, yeah for, and, 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 and not, <laughs> if it's not in the family, it's all right. But if it's kind of someone on the street... They love it. It's straight yeah, in. No, they love it, yeah. It's yeah. hand-rubbing yeah. stuff, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Because <laughs> yeah. when you spent all that time in Mayo as a kid, um, you, were, you were kind of smuggled, were you, like, uh, across in the, the cars and the boats? Just yeah, to, to yeah, save yeah. To, to, save, to save money buying tickets, uh, one of the kids would always have to... So if my aunties were in the back or whatever, there'd be a child underneath a blanket <laughs> behind, behind the legs. And... Uh, of course, you don't think anything of it as a yeah. child growing up. You just think it's like, you know, some mad adventure. But, um, of course, they were jibbing people on the, on the ferry, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, uh, but, um, yeah, those, those, those summer holidays in, uh, in Ireland are great. I was talking to a journalist about it before. Yeah. Because, because she's, like, one of 11 and she's got six sisters and they all had, you know, ch kids and they're on the... <laughs> They all went to my poor grandma's all for the six-week holidays, but my grandma wasn't too pleased about. No. Um, it was like a little youth club there. There was had loads of kids there. <laughs> we had a great time, you know. You'd, and the summers in the 70s seemed to yeah. be proper summers then, yeah. do you know what I mean? And, um, yeah, they were great. They were great times, yeah. Yeah, and a, a totally different world from Manchester that where you're growing up. I suppose that contrast must have been very pronounced. Well, yeah, where we grew up, it's like council estate, the yeah. big city, and then you you go to the west side of Ireland and you're in the country, you know, and there's like, it's, you know... If you could, hit, you could where my gran used to live, there'd be... A, the road would come round the bend. If you were at a car, everybody would go out to see who it was. You know, <laughs> and, the excitement. Uh, yeah, and, you know, and, 
And the big, the big day of the week was when she'd go into town to get a pension. Yeah. You know, and everyone would traipse in with her, you know, and wait till she got a little bit pissed. And then uh, <laughs> you could tap her up for some money. <laughs> um, so you learned but, early how to hustle. Uh, I've, well, yeah. <laughs> well, oh, those were great. They were, they were great. Yeah. They were great times. Yeah. In well, it, I mean, as, as your, you know, yeah. your, your childhood should be, I suppose. No, there's, there's a sense of that. And when you, listening to your new album, are, are, you, are you in a reflective mode? Or, you know, when it's... Well, uh, well not, not deliberately, but the songs were all written in the lockdown in 2020. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't planning on writing at the time. I'd just come back off, uh, off the road with you 2 mm. And um, I'd, um, I was going to take some time out. And I guess because none of us had lived through a pandemic before, so none of us knew how we were going to get out of it. And none of us could understand how we'd got into it. I think, as a, I think as an artist, artists probably navigated it a bit better than most people because my entire world is inside my head. You know mm. what I mean? And I just I, I wrote my way through it. And I guess my some of the some of the songs are quite reflective of kind of not looking back to childhood, but like recent history on how, how we'd managed to get to where we were. Yeah. You know? um, but yeah, but if the, if the album's got one overriding theme, I'd say it's reflection. Yeah, because yeah. the, the, the track that jumps out as you're talking is Council Skies. And yeah. that, even the title, we were, I was mentioning it to you before the show. It's yeah, a well, I was, title. I, I was writing the song and I, I'd always hit a brick wall when it came to the chorus bit and I, I, didn't have, I didn't have the hook for it. And there's a friend of mine who's an artist from Sheffield mm. called Pete McKee. And he does paintings of... Uh, depicting characters from council estates. And it just happened to be on a table at home while I was noodling around on the guitar. And um, the book is called Council Skies. Mm. And uh, so I called him and I said, can I, can I use this tile? And he said, yeah, it'd be an honor to use it. And um, so it fit, with every, it fit with everything. And I kind of rewrote the song about trying to find beauty in a big city mm. and amidst the concrete and all that. And um, and I said, what is Council Skies? Tell me about it. So I've got, you know, I'm going to be talking about it soon or later. And it's a, it's a specific shade of blue that he uses to paint the, the background on the skies, yeah. which I thought was quite poetic. Go, go yeah. from the, the, the beautiful summers you described in Mayo to the council estate that you described in Manchester to the crazy of Oasis to the relatively different but no, no less enjoyable of High Flying Birds. How, what, what do you think of it all? Looking, it's quite a tapestry. I don't know, I guess, I, guess, I guess one day I'll look back on it. I don't know, I'm kind of, because I'm, because I'm a writer, I'm just in it and I'm, I'm, kind, I'm, I'm you're, kind of... You're living it. Yeah, I'm kind of writing my way through it. I don't, I tend to live more in the moment than, I don't tend to, re, to notice what's going on around me that much. Okay. I tend to live in my own head and I'm, a, and a, I kind of live in the moment, but yeah. it's been, you know, my... Well, our childhood in Manchester was no different than any of our other friends. So when, like, you tell people, you know, the, the way that you grew up, it's quite, it's quite, uh, you know, we were quite, we didn't have much money and all that. It's quite brutal, but so was all of our friends. Yes. So you're all in it together. Do you know what I mean? Until success, in which you're you're a million then, miles away. Yeah, and th yeah, and then success takes you out of your your home life, and then you. And then you're at the mercy of the world, but it's how you deal with it. I mean, some some people do not react well to yeah. success. Amy Winehouse, just for one example, yeah. you know, it, it, it can hit you pretty hard. But what kept you sane, though? Well, well, our greatest strength was also our greatest weakness in the sense that me and Liam always had a, we had a, we had a family member in the band, mm. so that kind of keeps you a little bit grounded. But then it also drives you mad at the same time, you know. So there was that, and we were all. We were all the original five, mm. all had Irish parents. Wow. So we all we had we had we had a lot in common. We came from the same part. We came from the same part of Manchester. We all had Irish mums. Uh, so we had funny tales about that growing yeah. up. So we had that, you know. And then, um, you know, and then the, the older that you get, you get your own family, and you tend to kind of drift apart. You know, it's yeah. not it's, it's not an uncommon tale. And now, you know, I'm a dad of three and. You know, I, I, I like it, you appreciate it more now than I ever did, I think. Do, have you any, give, ever given it any thought as to what you might have ended up doing had you not found rock and roll <clears> or <throat> gone into the... Like, it would... Depends who you ask. Um, I don't... 
if I look at the, if I look at my friends yeah. that I had then, and I still see them when I go back to Manchester, by the looks of things, I've definitely been bald. <laughs> That's a common commonality there. There is, a, there is, a, there's a definite <laughs> loss of hair gone on, but uh, I don't know. I don't. Okay. I don't. I don't think about it because I don't have to think about it. You don't it, have to. Okay. Let me let me put to you three things: music, football, kids. In what order? Please. <laughs> Take your time. Okay. I'll, okay. Well, kids goes without saying. Uno. Right. Now we battle for second and third right. place. But football was my first love. I was into football before I was into music. Mm. But then music has given me <laughs> a, a fantastic life. So probably kids' music and football. Yeah. Kids are not kids anymore. <laughs> so. Okay. Kind of yeah. What, <laughs> what, uh, yeah. Good answer. God one damn of, you. One of them is a fully grown adult and the other two are on the way to being yeah. adults, so I can, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can scratch them out of the conversation sooner or later. <laughs> your kids will always be your kids and all as well, you know. Good. <laughs> OK, so that gives us a, a fair... Do you remember the first time you picked up a guitar? I mean, do, do you remember where... Well, my, my, my dad... Uh, I don't know whether he won this guitar at a game of cards mm. or whether he was, he was fancying himself as, you know... Uh, I don't know why, but it was in that he couldn't play it. It was in the house behind the kitchen door, and um, I used to get grounded a lot as a as a teenager. I was a bit difficult, mm. and I would take this guitar upstairs, and just it was just a form of escapism for me. And I just learned to play it one string at a time, um, and it just was something that I didn't instantly fall in love with it, but it was something that I. You know, back in those days, didn't have the phones and, and the 27,000 channels of television and all that. It wasn't a great deal to do. And uh, I, just, I, I just became obsessed with it, you know, and I still play every day and I write every day. I'm still essentially the same. I still feel the same way about it. My, my, my job is my hobby, you know, and I'm, I'm really lucky that I don't have any other hobbies. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, don't, I don't really... I'm not really into anything else apart from doing what I do, you know. And what I mean? football. Yeah, and, well, not football and the family and, yeah, and music. Yeah. That's it. I don't really. That's plenty. I can't drive. I haven't got a fleet of cars. Uh, did you learn to drive? No. I've only had one driving lesson. <laughs> How'd it go? Dreadful. When was it? It was in 1996. <laughs> Come on. And uh, it was in a red Nissan Micra with a massive <laughs> big L, L on top of it. <laughs> and uh, it was on a housing estate in Slough. Oh, lovely. And this woman, uh, I was, was attempting a three-point turn as the local comprehensive came out at about R4. And was just, the car was surrounded by kids. And, uh, but I've seen so many people stress out driving. My, my dad used to come out with Shakespearean insults <laughs> to other, other drivers. Uh, and I just remember seeing him driving and thinking, I don't want to get into that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, I know people who've got cars and they just stress out yeah, about parking. Yeah. And I, you know, I take the tube in London and... Yeah. and uh, I, th I remember yeah. meeting you once in, uh, got a U2 gig in, in London and you said that you'd got the tube or you, yeah. I read that you... Do you not get mobbed on the tube or...? No, surprisingly, people are not that... Did... I've been mistaken for Liam quite a few times. People have said, all right, Liam. I'm, yeah. Um, I, uh, no, 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 I, I've got to ask you, how, does that, how, how, how are you with that? I don't mind. I don't mind. You're laughing. I don't, it? Yeah, I don't mind. I don't and, mind. And you say they're not coming up for well, selfies and... No, I mean, I mean London, it's, I mean, it's a huge metropolis and people are so busy with the phone. Yeah. I, remember once, I remember once coming back from the... Um, we'd been out at the, at the Brits. And we'd been out all night, and I mean all night. And I was getting the tube on from where I was, and it was packed, got on the tune at rush hour, like in the evening, it's packed. We're all stood like, you know, and there was a fella, and I was stood behind him, and he was reading a copy of the newspaper, and there was a big massive picture of me coming out of a party at three o'clock in the morning, like absolutely hammered. And I was kind of looking <laughs> over his shoulder, thinking, I wonder if, if he turns round now. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it was, uh, but I do like it. The yeah. tube is a great leveler, because there's no, there's no first class on it. So you're on it together, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I've been asked a few times, is this to stop for Madame Two Swords and all that kind of thing? 
And uh, but you know, it's, 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 it's the most are practical way of getting around. London. No question, no question. Yeah. When when you're with high flying, when you moved to high flying birds post Oasis, how did you how did you manage that in your head? Because I always think of like Wurzel Gomez. Do you remember Wurzel Gomez? Mm. The head, yeah, yeah, Oasis yeah. head, and high flying birds head. Is that what you did? Or? Well, I gave, I gave my. So I left in two thousand and nine. I didn't put a record out till two thousand and twelve. Mm. So I gave myself when I, when I left. My manager said, "What are you going to do?" And I was the only thing that I knew what I was going to do was do nothing. I was just going to just take a bit of time out, and um, then. My missus got pregnant, and I was like, right, I'm definitely going back to work now then. <laughs> and um, I, just, I just took it, I, you know, I thought, I'll make a record. I have all these songs that I'd written, which was going to be the next Oasis record. I'll record those. I'll see how they sound. If they sound, if they sound good to me, I'm very critical of what I do. Mm. If they sound good to me, I'll put a band together. I just took it step by step. And the way I work now, I, it's just I do it project by project. You know, it's at the end yeah. of every tour... You're always a bit frazzled and uh, always a bit jaded by being away. And then all of a sudden it comes back, you know, and then I'm excited to go back out on tour now. And... When, when people shout up, sing an old, an old song, does that bother you or do you just roll with that or do you let no, it... It's a, it's an, do you know what? It's a privilege that people care, particularly young people who, some of who weren't even born yeah. when we broke up. Yeah. Far less born when we were, we were together, but... Now, when I'm putting a, a set list together now, I always try and put myself in the position of a person that's coming to see me for the first time. Okay. Right? So, I... The stuff that they want to hear, and the stuff that I want to play, you mm. know, and then there's the, bit, there's the bit in the middle. So, I just try... And, you, and you've got to think, well, you can't please everybody, so ultimately you've got to please yourself. Sure. But you only really know how good your tour is, is when you put the next one on sale mm. Mm. and people are coming back to see you. So, as it stands, it must be pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so it's gone out. No, of course it is, of course. I want to ask you before you go, because I know when you come to Dublin, you're, you're pals with Bono from U2, <laughs> and um, you, they're, 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 you have to be in the whole of your health to party with that man. You, you, you've said this before. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know if you've recovered from that time you went out with him a few <laughs> years ago, um, which was, was it in his house? I mean, it sounds like it was like... No, a, I, I won't. If it's the story you're referring to, yes. I, w I, w I woke up in his, I woke up in his house. I had no idea I got there, and <laughs> that's we, the one. We we were we were we were on tour. We were due in Paris to do a show uh, the next day, and um, so alcohol had been taken on board, and uh, I was hanging, the worst I'd ever felt in my entire life. Shane McGowan was involved. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, understand. One of those nights. Yeah. And uh, trying to have the hair of the dog on the plane and all that. And I got to the hotel in Paris and, uh, before the plane was landing. And B says, Look, I've got, I've, I've got to go and see somebody, but I'll see you back at the hotel. And I was like, Thank God he's going. <laughs> he's like, Thank God he's gone. So he, he goes off in uh, some big motorcade. And I get back to the hotel and I'm dying to get into bed. And I thought, Well, I ordered some food uh, and I was in a mess, like properly in a mess. I had the shakes. And as I was waiting for my food to come, I just turned on the telly. And there he is with the president of France. <laughs> <laughs> right? In front of the world's press. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Made you know, a difference, Doc. Yeah, it's just like, well, I, there was nearly a fatality. Like, I nearly died. <laughs> And there, and there he is discussing the monetary situation in the, somewhere with somebody about something. And I was like, Max, who puts the batteries in this guy? <laughs> we'll be seeing you uh, back in August. You're playing the Royal Hospital. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, You've got the family involved now. Nace is, is involved with the she photography. She is, yeah. She's, uh, she does a bit of filming for me now. Great. She'll be there. The boys will be there. Um, no doubt Arthur Charles Town will be there as usual. Yes, of course. Um, but just yeah. to make sure Bono doesn't show up. And not sure when is it August. They might, they might be. Oh, they'll be in America getting yeah. ready for that. Of thing course, they're getting ready for Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But most importantly, uh, thanks for coming on tonight. Oh, it's always been lovely having you on the show. Thanks for the Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Well,